Good morning, good morning. Good morning, good morning. Happy Saturday. This is Charlie Newton here again for another Splash Live Art class. So we, what we do is we come and we just do art with, with kids every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. And uh, we are so happy to be here with you today. You know what? What I'm going to do today is I'm going to introduce you to another black artist or African-American artist. And his name is Stanley uh, Whitney. Stanley was born in Philadelphia, but he's worked in New York City. And he actually, he lives in New York and in uh, Parma, Italy. And Stanley's work is very famous. I would, I would say the last 20, 25 years, his work has really uh, come on. You can find his artwork in every major art museum in the world now. And uh, uh, he became famous in his older age, like many black artists. Uh, uh, we were sort of kept out of the mainstream art. And just a few years ago, maybe 20 years ago, um, uh, we started getting recognized. So most of the people who were my teachers now, my mentors, now they are being recognized in their older age. And, and uh, when I say being recognized, I mean they're being exhibited all over the world and their artwork is worth up in the thousands and thousands of, uh, and hundreds of thousands of dollars. So uh, I want to share Stanley with you because he has a very strong uh, art background. He actually taught uh, at uh, the Tyler School of Art and, and uh, uh, well, at Temple University. So he was an art professor and he's taught all over New York and it, he's exhibited all over New York as well. His art is abstract and they sort of try to connect his work with that uh, abstract impressionist. But I can also see a bit of cubism. I can see a bit of the color field school and all these things. But his work is pretty simple, but it's all about color. So let's, uh, what we're going to do, we're going to do some artwork uh, sort of like his. I hope, have you been able to put a picture of Stanley up yet? Okay, so you see what he looks like. And uh, he, I, I think he's probably in his 70s now. Uh, he was born in 1946. So he's, yeah, he's, he's in his 70s now. Um, so, okay, let's look at his work. One thing I want to say to all of you, students and parents, is that um, one thing that we try to do with Splash is, and I'm trying to find just the right paper to use. I'll use this paper. Um, one thing we try to do, I want to share with you contemporary art, even though we'll do a lot of art. Um, we've been doing a lot of, we've, we will do a lot of modern art. Abstract art is modern art. And when I say abstract, and when I use the word modern art, that means the art of the 1950s and 60s. And the reason why I will mention I'm showing you abstract art shapes and colors because that's the foundation of all art, shapes and colors. And I've been trying to teach you how to sketch and it takes a lot of sketching, a lot of sketching, okay? I mean, hundreds and hundreds of sketches. But if, if you are an artist, you're going to make hundreds and hundreds of sketches because that's your, your life, you know? But I want my students because a lot of my students cannot afford to have private art lessons. So this is a rare opportunity that I did not have when I was your age. I, I, I want to encourage you to take advantage of this opportunity to learn. It, it's rare. Usually you have to pay uh, for this type of education. But I want to offer it to you for free because I was poor growing up and I loved art so much. but you know, we couldn't afford for me to take art classes. And that's how Splash was founded. 
is these everything I'm teaching you is very important so that when you try to enter the art market as a professional, you will have this foundation. It's a simple foundation. I want to train your eyes. I want to train your eyes and your hand. And then periodically we insert uh, some art history like today. Uh, Stanley Whitney, we're inserting, we're inserting his art. So his art, even though it's, con it's, it's, abstract, it's modern and it's abstract, but when you think of the words modern, you think of the 1950s, 1960s. His work is also contemporary. And it is contemporary. When you think of contemporary, you think of 2020. Okay. And there's a lot involved in that. But the main thing I want you to know, kids right now, students, I want you to know this. You have the art inside of you already. It's already in you. So you may not understand everything uh, intellectually, but your eyes can understand a lot in your heart, your eyes and your heart. So, this is simple what we're going to do, but it's not simple. Okay, it's it actually it's more it's easier for children than for adults. So we're going to do some work like like Stanley Whitley, you know, if we can. Did you, did, did I give you a picture of his him standing in front of his painting? No. Okay. Anyway, his artwork. A lot of his artwork is very small, but the the work that you will see in museums are huge, like over six feet tall. I think I gave you a studio view. Yeah. Okay, can you put up that studio view? I'm gonna look at it on my phone and see what they're looking at. So I wanted you to see the studio view so that you can see how he figured out uh, his work. He started with those works on the bottom done in black, blue, and red. He, this is those pieces that look like a bunch of squares. That's how he started uh, as far as discovering his signature style. When I say signature style, that means the style that everybody know him by. When he writes his signature on his finished picture, this is the style that we're going to do today that made him famous and made his work worth the hundreds of thousands of dollars. Now, people say, well, why is that worth so much money? Well, th that's what your art education will do, will teach you. No one who don't have art education can, can teach you this. You, know, you, you need to be educated so that you understand. So I encourage you to go to art school. I encourage you to go to the university, to go to college, you know, to learn all you can. I encourage you to go to art shows and museums and galleries. So let's look at his studio shot again. So you have here, these are actually sketches. Now the ones on the bottom, the ones in black and blue and red, he just started doing these as an investigation. He's searching. So he's building. These are those, that's like the skeleton or the building blocks of his art. It's, it's, it's like the, if you're going to build a house, uh, Suppose you were going to build a house, but you didn't know how to build a house. And not only did you not, not know how to build a house, but you don't know what a house is. Well, you, you may get some, you know, you say, well, you know, the house needs to be tall, you know, taller than me or something. And you might find some, uh, a tree and say, well, I need to cut this tree down. And you find some wood and you might say, well, this wood is not straight enough. Let me find some, some different woods, you know. So he's discovering is what I'm trying to say. He's experimenting. And so these linear, these line drawings are his discovery drawings. And he did hundreds of those. And then one day he decided, I'm going to experiment with some color. And the, you can see the, the ones that's, that's laying out uh, on the bench. And, and the ones to the lower right hand corner, those two on the bottom, and then you go back over to your left and that one, those are, these are drawings. So he did drawings in color. Okay. He did drawings in color. And he's building his, 
a oeuvre, O-V-R-E. He's, he's building his resume. He's building his statement, his, how he feels about art. And it takes a lot of drawing. It takes a lot of sketches. And now he's you know, probably a millionaire, I don't know, but he's very rich now from his art. But he went through self-discovery. Now in life, children, self-discovery is the best discovery. Nobody know you but you and God. You know, nobody else can know you. So, but what we're going to do, we're going to do some sketches. I want to use the, um, the oil pastels again because it will help increase your drawing ability. It increases your facility, which means your hand, your skills. And that's what I want you to have some real skills. Anybody can do this. Anybody's, everybody's skill, if you're a human being, your skills can be developed if you work on it. Now, some artists, you know, they're like endowed with some special talents but what we do in here is not about your talent. It's about your work ethic. Are you willing to work? I was thinking this morning, I know I'm talking a lot, but I want you to have the right mindset in approaching these. So we may do one or two or three today, but I want you to do at least 10. I'm going to say that again. And I hope some of my major students, my best students, I hope you're watching this video. I would like for you to do at least 10 of these and uh, let me see them because we are going to, we're put, putting an art show together. Okay, so, uh, and you know we sell our kids art. So first let's, let's, get, let's get a light blue and we're going to line our uh, paper. We're going to divide our paper the way Stanley would have. And Anthony, you can switch around uh, showing his artworks, you know. I, you know what? Let me see which one I want to do. I may not have the same images that you have. Okay, I don't. So kids, you're going to use, uh, do we have a, uh, a pastel image that he did? A drawing? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. Do you have an image where you see the drawing strokes? Yeah. I don't believe it's pastel. Okay. Yeah, okay. Okay. Is it red in the corner? I'm seeing if you have the yeah, same. It's red. Yeah. Okay. We're gonna do that one. We're gonna do that one. We and ours not will not look exactly like his because you don't have all these colors. But we're going to go through a similar process as his that he did. Now. These are not pastels. Actually, this is acrylic paint that he used, I think, or maybe watercolor, but we're going to use pastels. So we're going to divide the picture and you can turn your paper. I'm going to turn mine. And I hope they can get a good view of this. Can you? Okay. And so we're going to turn our paper the landscape way. And we're going to divide your paper. I'm using light blue because you can draw over it and you can use any color you want to. Okay, we're not going to do exactly this picture, but we're going to uh, be, allow ourselves to be influenced by this picture. I'm going to divide my paper once, twice. Make your lines as straight as you can, but don't have to be perfect like that. Now, and this is weird how he does this. I've never done one of his works before. Okay, so we divided the paper up. And we're going to put some blocks on the paper. You can put some rectangles and squares. Any way you want to, how many you want to. Put some on the second line, on the first line, on top of the first line. And we're going to, I'm going to double that line. Usually he'll have three lines here, two or three. Then do the second row. Now you notice that uh, he's just dividing the paper. So do it however, whatever feels comfortable, comfortable 
for you. But don't let, don't let it look like a brick wall. Now, I don't think his process was exactly the way I'm doing it here. I think he did one block at a time. I'm almost certain because he wanted, but it's going to be easier for us to go ahead and uh, divide it uh, like this. Maybe he didn't do one block at a time. I don't know how he, I don't know his process. <laughs> I could probably find out. So I want you to use one color at a time and begin to color in some of uh, these blocks. Just put some color there. And leave one or two, a few blocks for, for white. And don't be in a hurry. Now, I usually tell you to use yellow first. I'm going to go ahead. I use red first, but uh, I'm going to use yellow. I'm following Stanley. You can follow me or not. I'm following Stanley because I want mine to look more like Stanley. So one test, there's two tests that you have here. The first test is, can you follow instructions? Second test is, can you draw what you see? Can you mimic me? Can you follow what I'm doing? You have to think about that. But I don't want your picture actually to look exactly like mine, so it's okay. So I'm not going really slow to make it so easy for you to follow me. Uh, but this, you, use, you have to use your eyes. Remember, art is a visual language. And I'm just trying to lay color down. Stanley's artwork, and not only Stanley's artwork, remember I said that his work is modern. So when, when I use the term modern art, you're thinking about the 50s. I'll say the 40s and the 50s. You think about people like Picasso. But when you think about, um, um, actually you can go from the 30s to the 50s when you're thinking about modern. So we don't want to think about Picasso today. We want to think more about abstract expressionists, which you hear me mention from time to time, the abstract expressionists. And uh, so I decided I wanted that to be shorter and you can just make those decisions too. It's your picture. So the abstract expressionists, uh, they were really into paint, color, and brushstroke. There was a movement that happened in Washington, D.C. alongside the abstract expressionists, which, which was called uh, color field, the color field movement. And that was basically about color. Now the abstract, when I'm thinking Stanley, for some of you older students, he took an, he's taking into consideration this rectangle, which is a flat two-dimensional uh, form and shape, the paper, the rectangle of the paper. And when he blocks it out, He's using this rectangle as to, to give him information about his blocks of color. So he's thinking about two-dimensional space. Now, the abstract expressionist said, and the modern artist said that painting is not about trying to make something look realistic. And we're talking about in the 50s, and we're in the year 2020 now. So people who only think that art needs to look like something, that's because they don't know anything about art. They know nothing about it. They haven't studied anything or they haven't been to a lot of museums. They just know what they like. And that's fine. That's fine. But for the artists, I think artists need to know about art so that, because you might want to teach it one day. Um, so the art now is the object. See this object here, this paper is an object, right? 
where this object is the art. It's not the representation of something. Now, in my own personal work, I love figures. I paint figures, cause I, and I tell stories with fi figures. And I, I, I might seem like I'm waffling on, but that's okay. <laughs> we ain't got nothing else to do but draw here. I want you to continue to draw. So, now if the art is an object, then it matters what type of materials you use. And, and it, it, you can overlay. See how I'm, I'm using this ochre here to overlay this yellow. Oh, this, this could be a nice picture. We're going for beauty here. It don't have to be beautiful. Um, did we, talk, we haven't talked about Rothko yet. I think that's me and I am talking about Rothko. Maybe, maybe we'll do some Rothko next time. So right now we're going for beauty. Beauty of the color, beauty in the material. Don't forget these lines here. You can color these lines too. You can, you can overlay. I want, in the end, you're going to have a lot of uh, color on your picture. I'm going to do a line up here at the top. So around the 19, I would say 1970s um, and 80s, the grid became very important in art. And that's what we just did. We, we placed a, a grid on this rectangle, this two-dimensional rectangle. What we did was we placed a grid and what the grid does, it breaks up the rectangle and adds some space in it. It puts some space in it. And some of you uh, artists who might be listening, you, you kind of know what, what I mean when I say figure ground relationships. So this grid also helps us to begin to think about those relationships between the figure and the ground. What is the figure on this? The figure, I guess, would be the block and the, my marks that I'm making. Now, kids, you don't even have to think about figure-ground relationships because I think you, you get that automatically. It's something about youth. See, we have to learn how to not be creative. <laughs> Everybody was born an artist. Everybody. You were born an artist. You were born to be creative. Some of you are disagreeing with me. I can hear you laughing right now. Trust me on this one. But you have to learn to not trust yourself. And, and uh, you have to, these, these are learned behaviors, to not like what you're doing and to be very, judgmental about yourself. Now I'm very, uh, I'm a perfectionist when it comes to my work. If it's not perfect, why do it? But only I can say if it's perfect or not. You can't because you don't, you're not me. <laughs> so now, you know, when I use words like honesty, being honest, that's what I'm talking about. You have to be honest with yourself. Now, if you're honest with yourself, that will show through in your artwork. So this is taking longer. I'm actually thinking about what I'm doing. That's, I'm not just doing anything. I'm trying to do an artwork that looks like Stanley Whitney. <laughs> okay, I'm trying to allow myself to learn from somebody who is more, you know, He's been doing it longer than me. He's more advanced. So he has more experience. Find your mentor. I know a lot of artists who don't have mentors. And, you know, you could be very successful monetarily, but you could be, you could be a flop when it comes to being a human being. And, and so if you're going to be an artist, you know, it's just kind of like playing basketball playing sports. You can talk 
You can talk the talk all you want to. And you can convince people who don't who don't know any better. But to me, it's important to be true to yourself. And if you can't be true to me, you know, why, what, what, if you can't be true to yourself, you're not going to be true to me. And so I think most artists know, you know, there's a place where the rubber hits the road. And it's like, can you actually do this or not? Now I sound like I'm boasting or something. But all I'm trying to say is give 100%. I was thinking about my father this morning. And one thing my father taught me is to never be lazy. And I don't know if I made him proud about that or not. But <laughs> I don't like hard work. But my father worked hard his whole life and made us work hard as children. Had us doing things like, see, the generation before me knew that they couldn't survive unless they worked hard. So I've done things like planted gardens, I mean, digging up ground, not with tillers, but with holes and shovels and things like that. You can blow your pastels off your paper or you can shake it off. I'm, I have a garbage can right here. I'm shaking off the excess, but you can also layer. I think I would like to even, I may even spray this when I finish to see what happens. It might make it too dark, I don't know. Look, see this blue here? I'm gonna go over this blue with, with black. I'm just going to make some marks like that. You can do stuff like that. I'm going to go with this white with red. Stanley would do stuff like that. I'm going over this yellow with orange. I'm still following Stanley's lead. Now I'm going to have, he had some broad strokes of orange, so I'm going to make my strokes broad. Put a little orange in here, up here. Put some red on this line here. So I'm allowing myself to be influenced by this famous black artist. Now, just because an artist is not famous don't mean that they're not relevant. <laughs> I'm not famous, <laughs> but I'm relevant. My, I may, my art may be famous after I die. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> See, I'm mixing the black and red here. I'm relevant because I'm teaching you. <laughs> If nothing else. You can also notice with your art what happens when you place one color on top of the other. Sometimes you'll like it, sometimes you won't. And then just take make a note of it, a mental note that, okay, if I do this this way, it's going to come out that way. And um, then try to decide if you like it, if that's okay, if you're okay with that. I'm going to do orange and green here. If, you, if I let my uh, green flow into this black, it's going to smudge. I'll, I'll, I'll do that to let you see what will happen. So that's one of the things that you'll learn. So if I do this and smudge and I, I don't like how it looks, then I, I don't do it no more. You notice how I'm cleaning my pastels? I clean my pastels often by rubbing it with a paper towel or cloth. I 
I know we started a little late because we had some technical di difficulty. So, uh, we may go over a couple of minutes today. So Stanley, what he's doing, if you can put your mind in the mind of the artist, is he's experimenting, he's searching. It's an investigation into color. So now he's one of the most renowned colorists in the world. Because he actually, the more he did, the better he got. Color can really speak to you. Um, if you just kind of like relax your mind and look at the color, there's a lot to be said for color. I love color. You notice how some of my blocks are just like Stanley's and some of them are, are different? We think of pastels, all pastels as painting. That's the vernacular that we use. If you get a chance after the pandemic is over with, visit some galleries. <laughs> I know a lot of people are going outside like nothing's happening, but actually I want you to know that uh, the pandemic, COVID-19, is really spiking in Tennessee. And more people are dying every day. So, but after the pandemic is over and you can visit galleries, I want to encourage you to do that. Now, galleries are open, but uh, I'm not encouraging anybody to risk in your grandparents' lives by visiting the gallery. But it's different when you look at art in real life, in person. I think I probably need some more solid colors in my picture. And I don't know why I use green there. My sensibility, the way I see things is different than Stanley. So I've been looking at his art. Now I'm going to place this art aside so that uh, I'm still being influenced by him, but I'm not copying. I'm not going to just copy his work. I'm going to allow his work to influence what I do. And that way, my work will look a little bit more honest. Because I cannot be Stanley, but I can be Charlie Newton. And I want you to be yourself. 
Now you may do a picture like this that don't have so as many blocks in it. Like Rothko, he might have two or three blocks, large blocks, huge blocks. And Rothko, would, he layers more than Stanley does. Mark Rothko is the person I'm talking about, who was a New York artist. Uh, they consider him a um, abstract expressionist as well, but he did not consider himself an abstract expressionist. People will always put labels on you, but it's up to you who you are. And you, you are what you do. What, whatever you do in life, that's who you are. get creative with these lines. So when I stop to think about what I'm doing, it changes the whole game. I'm trying to, the less I talk, the better this is going to be. So you guys know that in art class, I don't like for people to talk because it's so distracting to others. Now, artists are different. Some artists can just talk, talk, talk. But most people need to concentrate. Shake it off. Oh, okay. So you see how l large that painting is. Now, I'm glad that you found that because um, what happens is when you, a viewer stands in front of a large work of art, the saturation of the colors can bring the viewer's attention into the work of art. And you, the person can get lost in the picture, in the painting. So the colors can be almost hypnotizing or mesmerizing for people. And that's one of the reasons why uh, he painted large. This blue I'm using, I don't like at all, but this is the blue that comes with this set. I would like a richer blue. Now when I look at this, I look at areas that I like and areas that I don't like. This is a weak area. This row is pretty weak here. I kind of I like these three. I like that, what's happening in there. I almost like this. I'm going to go over it and see if I'll like it more when I go over it with yellow. And I do. And a lot of times what I'll do is I'll repeat. If I see something I like, I will repeat it. And I tr or and or and I try to bring the rest of the painting up to that level. I really want to see what you guys are doing. I really do. I know you're coming up with some good stuff. This type of project is perfect for children. 
I actually, what I would want to do is actually paint watercolor on top of this. You could do that. I may give you a demonstration. I think what I may do is get some watercolor, black. You could really, ink would be the thing to use. But um, I think I'm gonna get watercolor and, and see what happens if I paint over this with black. I like purple. The the red over the blue turns it into a, like a deep purple. I like the the way that looked better than the blue. So I'm getting rid of some of this blue. Yeah, that works better for me. This oil pastel is very gooey, and you can use that uh, as part of your uh, technique. some white now when you um I wonder what this flesh tone would do experiment with your art now while you when you are making your art it's nobody but you and your work of art you can mess up you can make mistakes you can experiment okay so even when you come to a splash class it's not like an art class a, a average. It's not like the average art class in school. Um, we give you room enough to experiment and to grow and uh, we try to give you some suggestions because of our knowledge from looking at art all over the world. We've, we've visited museums and galleries all over the world really. And we've seen a lot of art. And that's what helps me to understand what the student is doing. Because nine times out of ten, I've seen it before over the years. Have a problem seeing what this look like on camera. So I have a lot of material. I'm just gonna press it down. I'm really putting a lot of pressure on this orange here. I want to bring out some of the orange. I'm going to clean my orange off. Clean the lipstick. It's very waxy. Now these are not the best pastels, but these are real good student grade pastels that I'm using. It's called Junior Artist Cray Pass. I like these because they are inexpensive 
a really good student grade. And um, pastels, uh, for the most part, can be pretty expensive artist pastels. When I'm doing, I'm pressing the pastel down. It's hard for you to tell, but I'm putting some pressure on it. So on some of these little chunks of pastel that you, that's on your paper, you can paint with that. I'm using that and pressing it down. Okay, so what I want to do, and if you have some black watercolor paint, shake it off. If you have black watercolor, you might want to consider. Now, if you like how your picture looks when you, once you finish it, don't do anything to it. But I'm thinking about, uh, now I've covered most of my paper, and there might be little bits of paper that hasn't been painted. And uh, I'm gonna get some watercolor. I'm gonna paint over it a little bit and see what happens. I'm will I take risks. <laughs> You have to be willing to take risks in this this game called art. Again, when you're working in your studio by yourself, th nobody knows that you're taking risks. Nobody can see it. So it, it's the time to experiment. When you're in an art class, you know, you, if you, you're not getting a grade for it, experiment. Have fun. Always have fun, though. Yes, you get disappointed sometimes. And that's a test of your character to not give up. Life is full of disappointments. So what, it's, what this black is doing is filling in where, the, where there's paper. So I don't have much paper, so I can use a larger brush. I'm going to get a larger brush and really fill this in fast. I thought we was going to go way over our time, but we're doing real good with time. So I'm just going to... So the paint will not stick to the pastel, but it will stick to the paper. And don't worry that the paint's not sticking, it's not supposed to. The paint beads up, that's what it's supposed to do. Okay? What it does, it just add, for me, it adds some character to the picture. It's almost like antiquing the picture. So I didn't leave much paper at all. That's good. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back with paper towel and clean up some of this black paint to take some back off. So it's kind of like it fills in. You could use any color paint, red, black, whatever. I'm going to take some of this paint back off with my paper towel. I'll get a clean paper towel. Now I start thinking about, man, this, I'm going to show you one more thing too before we go. Man, this is going to look good framed. 
So I saw I like mixing paint and ink with pastels. That's just Charlie Newton's technique. Okay, uh, like I say, don't do it unless you want you want to do that. Uh, if you're if you're happy with your picture, don't do anything to it. <laughs> I'm gonna put some more white back in on top of the paint here. So that's, that's the other thing about it. Now, you, you, normally I would wait till the paint dry and then you can go back over it. I think I'll stop there before I mess, really mess it up. Remember to put your name in the bottom left or bottom right hand corner. I've just put my initial and put your age, okay? So we really do like to exhibit student artwork and uh, we do have a show coming up. And uh, your artwork has to pass the test, though. If, usually, when you do your best, it passes the test. All right, that's another day. That's a wrap. Another day in the art studio. You keep painting. Do a couple of more of these. You know, experiment. Usually, if you do 10 pictures, the 10th one it's going to be way better than the first one. The third one's going to be better than the first one if you put everything into it. And it don't take that much time. So I'm so glad you joined me today. And remember, art is for everyone. Bye-bye.